After watching Trump spend the last eight years alternating between thriving and surviving politically, despite having everything plus the kitchen sink and a few appliance doors thrown at him by DC's ruling class, their media, their justice system, their surveillance agencies, and their categorical life-threatening incompetence, see July 13th for more information. You might think conventional Republicans who don't have the courage to tackle matters the new Bolsheviks have deemed taboo would at least remain silent in the face of things they clearly do not understand. Unfortunately, humility is the enemy in our politics today. Enter Nikki Haley dancing to the tune Jake Tapper is playing. One of the things that uh, Republican congressional leaders have had to tell their members is to not attack her on the basis of her gender or her race, to go after her on policy issues, as you just did. Uh, we've heard members of Congress call her uh, DEI uh, hire, suggesting that you know she's an affirmative action pick. How do you respond to that? It's not helpful. It's not helpful. Look, I mean, we're talking about a liberal senator who literally has not accomplished very much. And what she was given, she didn't do much with. You don't need to talk about what she looks like or what gender she is to talk about that. The American people are smarter than that. Talk about the fact that, you know, she doesn't believe in fracking. Tell that to the voters in Pennsylvania. Talk about the fact that she doesn't want to talk about paying down debt. She wants to increase taxes. Tell that to the American people. Talk about the fact that consumer prices have gone up 19.5% since Joe and Kamala were in office. Talk about the fact that she's always sided with the Palestinian protests instead of our friend Israel. There are so many issues we can talk about when it comes to Kamala Harris. They have the childless cat ladies and we have the scaredy cat ladies. First, neither Trump nor anyone else has been critical of what Kamala looks like. That is a false premise promulgated by the likes of Jake Tapper and designed to get scaredy cat ladies like Nikki Haley, someone given to forays into identity politics herself, to advance their race hustle. As the documentarian Eli Steele, a multiracial gentleman himself, recently wrote on this matter of Kamala's racial identity, quoting Eli, the most revealing thing about the debate over Kamala Harris's racial identity is that it proves there is no meaning to race but power. In other words, race is only what we make of it to gain an advantage over another tribe. That is why using race as a means to power, as my father says, always corrupts the exploiter and larger society. Perfectly stated by Eli. The issue is not and never was what Kamala looks like, but rather how she uses her racial identity in the most unseemly fashion as a sword or a shield to advance her political ambition. Second, Trump is once again directionally correct to raise the issue of Kamala's general phoniness right down to her identity. At the Black Journalist Convention in Chicago, Trump didn't explain it with the eloquence of an Eli Steele, but in fact, he got to the heart of the matter in the way he framed the choice at a rally in Atlanta recently. The choice of this election could not be more stark on the one hand, you have a radical left freak. You have a candidate who is fake, fake, fake. On the other hand, you have a president who will fight, fight, fight for America. Fight, fight, fight. I will. Have fake, fake, fake versus fight, fight, fight. That's right. Kamala is the latest in a long line of frauds attempted by the new Bolshevik. This is what Trump does. He instigates rhetorical fights and lets other people fill in the blanks while he sloganizes the big takeaway for the campaign trail. Which leads me to the third point. People are tribal. Family is important. Identitarians are ascendant. They are perpetuating the idea of race as a source of political power. These are real political issues. And people have immediate and visceral reactions to them, like, for example, the visceral reactions against DEI hiring practices against slavery reparations, against discrimination based on race and college admission. Identitarianism is an assault on meritocracy, which is a fundamental feature of a free society. It should be addressed head on, and Trump has us talking about it again. Fourth, prompting these debates does not crowd out discussions on inflation, immigration, energy, or education. In fact, it sets them up. Just as Kamala flip-flops on her racial identity, depending on the audience, so she does on these other policy issues. Kamala is now a supporter of fracking and an opponent of providing taxpayer-funded health care to people in this country illegally. 
The problem is, pointing out a politician's hypocrisy is the easy part. It's not nearly the kill shot many think. People are used to the prevarications of politicians telling them what they want to hear. They expect to be lied to. Some even welcome it. The trick is to impress upon the voter who this person really is and who she will ultimately serve. Kamala is another cipher with a toothy grin fronting for the new Bolshevik. They ran this program with Obama in 2008 and they're running it again. The problem with this political redux for them is Kamala's record is replete with consistent water carrying for the most intemperate, ghoulish, and dare I say, weird constituencies in her party. She doesn't have a, there are no red states and no blue states DNC speech in her background to sell the scam. The one thing Kamala hasn't repudiated and won't is her commitment to serve the new Bolshevik. Her selection of the Bernie Sanders back candidate as her VP running mate speaks to this. Those suggesting Trump rerun the George H.W. Bush playbook from the 1988 campaign against Dukakis do not seem to appreciate the place to which new Bolsheviks have brought America. It is a place where, as Lance Morrow recently wrote, boys may be girls and girls may be boys, according to impulse or whim. Criminals are victims. Civilization is barbaric. The ambition of the progressive left has been to dismantle the previous America as being racist, oppressive, sexist, and excessively white to turn society upside down, shake it by the ankles until change falls out of its pocket. In other words, this is not a place where stoic recitations about lower marginal tax rates accompanied by incantations about the dangers of San Francisco liberals will suffice. This is not a, you win some, you lose some, democracy's messy, the people's will be done, ordinary course of business election. It's not that. It's personal. It should be pursued with the requisite passion. It should be contested on every front. Fake, fake, fake versus fight, fight, fight. I'm Dan Proft with the Counterculture Commons. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And please leave a comment in the comment section. We'd love to hear your thoughts.